Yeah. Okay, for the next talk, uh, our presenter is Etienne Docol, and she's going to talk about web development in Lua, introducing Sailor, an MVC web framework. Thank you. Um, so I, I was in the panel earlier, so probably not everyone was there, so I'm going to introduce myself again. This is my Twitter handle, in case you want to talk to me later. I am the lead developer of Sailor. I also participated in the last Google Summer of Code, so Sailor, uh, a part of Sailor was a project uh, during it. I'm also trying to organize something called Lua Ladies, which is an initi initiative to bring more women to programming through Lua. Uh, and I'm also the maintainer uh, of Lua Space, which is a Lua community blog. Okay, so the topics I'll cover in the talk are web development in Lua, Sailor itself, and the future. Hmm, there's something weird about my slides, because I skipped those, but they... Okay, there. Okay, so um, why Lua? Why is Lua an interesting choice? for web development. The thing is, it is easy. It is an, a, an, a language that is ridiculously easy to learn. It is very accessible. It is a high quality piece of technology and has nothing to lose um, compa uh, comparing it to other popular languages that are currently being used in this domain, such as uh, PHP, Python, JavaScript, Ruby. Uh, and it's also incredibly fast. So here you see a, a, a task, comp uh, a speed comparison of Lua and many other programming languages, and you can see that it performs um, better than other popular ones. And Lua JIT, which is a special um, implementation of Lua, is even better than uh, JavaScript, faster than JavaScript VH. So it's it's really nice. One of the mo main complaints we have in the Lua community, though, is the lack of tools and the lack of environment to support web development. However, this is no longer true. I have been exploring um, the web development area of Lua for about two years now, and many things have changed. So we do have the tools today. So let's take a look. So you are able to use Lua with different web servers, uh, including Apache. Apache has an extension for it called Matlua that allows you to run Lua scripts over the Apache server. Nginx has a special distribution, uh, OpenRST. So OpenRST is not a specific model. It's like a bundle of modules packed together with Nginx, and it's really interesting. Firstly, because it's high quality piece of technology and secondly, because uh, it allows you to do non-blocking I.O. without having to write it in an event-driven fashion. So you can write regular procedural code Nginx will handle all the events internally and you don't have to deal with things like callback hell, which is pretty nice. Well, on the top of that, there are the two web servers mostly used, so they're pretty popular. There are people that know how to use those servers, so this, has, this allows uh, um, an easier entry to, to developing over them. There are also other servers um, that are compatible with Lua. There is uh, Shavanti, which is a pure Lua web server, and some others. We also have frameworks of various kinds, um, micro frameworks, MVC, event driven. Um, I like to call attention to Lapis, which I would say it's the flask of Lua. So it's a really nice framework. The documentation, it's amazing. Um, it was originally built with MoonScript, which is like, it's a language that compiles to Lua like CoffeeScript compiles to JavaScript. Yeah, it's a, re it's a really nice framework. Um, we have Orbit um, that is pretty stable, but 
it has been a little bit abandoned uh, um, recently. Uh, I'd also like to call attention to Love It. So Love It is a port of Node.js to Lua, specifically. Um, except that it runs two to four times faster and saves up to 20 times memory, which is really impressive comparing already what Node.js can do. And it has a really, uh, it is in really intense development. There are people working on it like for real, find support and everything. The downside to it is that the documentation is pretty bad, but you can ask people around. It's not bad if you already come from Node.js, in fact. And then there's Sailor. So what exactly is Sailor? So like the title said, it, it is an MVC web framework. Uh, it is completely written in Lua. It is compatible with many of the servers I mentioned before, um, many operational systems, databases. It is MIT licensed, which is I think the most permissive you can get. You can fork it and rename it to Potato if you want. And we are currently in the version, oops, in the version 0 0.5. So we are on pre-release, but I'm really working very hard. So the next release is one that we can claim to be ready for production use. Any case you are wondering, uh, yes, uh, the name is a reference to Sailor Moon. So what else is cool about it? So Sailor does a lot of things that an MVC framework is supposed to do. So it has routing, sessions, um, validation, authentication modules, generates forms, generates models. Uh, it is integrated with automated tests. But it has something in particular that the other ones don't have, which is the ability, ability to run Lua on the browser. So the thing is, when you're a beginner in web development, you have lots of things to learn, right? People used to say web development is easy, it's a good area for beginners, but it is very complex because you need to learn a lot of stuff. You need to learn HTML, CSS, server-side language, client-side language, database stuff. I mean, if you're going to build something from the bottom up, there's, this is a lot. So one way you can reduce this barrier is use the same language on the server side and on the client side. So if you're a beginner and, uh, and you don't know JavaScript, you don't have to. And of course, this has some costs. It has performance costs because you're going to run Lua inside a virtual machine that will uh, translate that to JavaScript. So we have a talk later from Paul, which he will talk more about this client-side area of, of Lua. So yeah, it has a performance cost, but it is also interesting in conciseness, because since you're using the same language, you can share modules, you can write maybe the validation once, and you'll use it on the back end and on the front end. And this is very nice for maintainability, so it will depend on what your priorities are. You're, of course, um, you don't have to use it, so, but it, it, it is there. What is not so great about Sailor, well, of course, there are things that are not so great. So, like I said, uh, we are still in pre-release, we are still in early development, and there are many things that are changing fast. So, I haven't been trying to do backwards compatibility, up until now, I will start doing after it is stable. It does not mean that there will never be a breaking change after I do that, because uh, I try to get the philosophy of Lua. Lua has had breaking changes over the time, but they were extensively discussed within the community, and it, were, it was these breaking changes that allowed the language to evolve and, and, and get nicer. So, so yeah, it, it means I will be more restrictive um, when, decided, when deciding to do breaking changes. Uh, it lacks some features, of course. 
there are many other stuff that uh, we would be glad if we had. Um, and documentation. Um, the documentation actually, it, it, it is already pretty nice, but documentation is something critical. It is just so essential that I will never take this off the, this list because documentation needs to be constantly improving and we are always surprised to see, oh, okay, this could be better explained and etc. So how do you get Sailor? Um, it is pretty straightforward. You get it from the Lua Packet Manager. So just do Lua Rocks install Sailor and then you can create your app somewhere and then you can start the server and it will spit a pretty app. So Sailor comes integrated with Bootstrap so it is not that ugly out of the box. But of course, you don't need to use it, but yeah, it's, it's, it, feels, it feels nice. And this is the structure it will have. So you have a place for configuration, controllers, uh, models, public stuff, things created at runtime, tests, teams, and deals. So I'm gonna give you an example of what a controller in Sailor looks like. So a controller in Sailor is a Lua module, meaning that it is a table with functions indexed to it, and this table is returned at the end. And it, um, its action of the controller is a method of this module. So here in my application, I have this controller called uh, site.lua. What does this mean? It means if I access my application address slash site uh, or slash site slash index, it will run this function. If I access uh, my application address slash site slash not index, it will run this other function. And this will, uh, wait. Uh, and this will be the output. Here I have uh, the view example. So if you go back here, the last thing we're doing over here is rendering uh, a view. So you're picking our view and then you're passing some arguments to it. So we're creating a message here and passing it over there. And then we can access it on the view. So views on Sailor are just regular HTML files where you can open web brackets. So you can do things, so you can print the message you're sent. We'll, of course, we have a small syntactic sugar for not having to use print all the time. This will be the output. Uh, well, I do have more examples, but I'm not sure if I'll have the time to go through all of them. I'll give just this one more. So like I said before, in, uh, in Sailor we have the ability to run code on both the server side and to ship it to the browser through a virtual machine. So how this is done exactly? Uh, well, like I said, views are just regular HTML files where you can open lower brackets. So we have this Lua as server tag, which is the default. So if you use just Lua, it will be the same as above. So this will run on the server side. We have Lua at client, which runs, which runs at the client side. This is where will run on the browser. And Lua at both, which will make a copy and run both on the server side and on the client side. So if you do this, we are creating a message both on the server side and on the client side. We can print it from the server and we can do things on the browser like popping up an alert message or creating a div somewhere outside. And this will be the output if we render that view. I'm not gonna have the time to go through the models right now, but well, we have validation, we have relations, and that's pretty much it. Um, 
and the future. Okay, so like I said before, I am planning to release a stable version as soon as possible. The issue is that we lack hands at work. So for a long time, I've been working on this basically alone. This was actually a project I started for fun. I was learning Lua. I had no idea what I was doing. And I said, I'm going to do something. And then I kept doing it. And then it turned out to be a sailor. <laughs> and the feedback from the community was actually what got me working in it and making it grow. Because as soon as I had something completely ridiculous, I posted it on the mailing list on, Re on Reddit, and people started joining in, joining in and giving comments and allowing me to, to grow and learn more things. But basically, I've been working on it alone for, for this time. Now, recently, I've got one contributor that is going to merge his project with Sailor, and I am very happy with that. That means we have great perspecti perspectives for the future, but we still need to implement more stuff. Because my original plan uh, was that Sailor became some sort of jungle or Ruby on Rails for Lua. Obviously, not as bloated because I think that would go against the philosophy of Lua. The philosophy of Lua is exactly to keep minimum. But at the same time, I think we need to make available more tools to make web development easy. And as Lua is already an easy language, I think this will be just the perfect combination plus the performance. So yeah, um, we need to make it happen. We need to gather people and start coding and do more things. So one of the things I was thinking was applying S uh, Sailor to Wait Rails Girls Summer of Code. Uh, it, it is not as uh, um, contradictory as it seems because, well, Rails Girls is obviously a, a group from the Ruby on Rails community. But this project is actually open to people from all languages. So there is no issue with me applying a Lua project to it. So what happens, um, this is basically a, like Google Summer of Code, but run by the Ruby community. And, and then I, I would have to mentor um, uh, new people. They're learning the language. They're learning how to program into developing uh, small features. This could mean new people joining in the community, new people uh, learning more about Lua. And the issue that I have right now is that I need to decide what exactly should come in the future to make it really um, a nice project um, in, the in the near future. So I've made this survey. Uh, if you want to check it out, I would deeply appreciate. So I've made a survey with some questions to the Lua community and other web development community about things they like about Lua, tools they use, things they would like to see. So if you could answer that, I would deeply appreciate. And well, now I'm coming to the end of my talk. So if you want to know more about Sailor, uh, this is the website, it's sailorproject.org. Uh, you find everything on GitHub, so github.com uh, slash sailorproject. Uh, if you want to know, if you want to discuss further, uh, we have a Google group, uh, a mailing list that you can try, you can suggest design ideas, you are more than welcome. And we also have a gear chat for the same purpose, except that is synchronous communication instead of a synchronous communication. Uh, if you want to contribute, if you want to contribute, you can well go to GitHub and take a look at our issues. We have plenty of discussions and things that could be uh, worked on. 
Uh, if you want to go to GitHub just to give us a star, you're also welcome. I love stars. And that's it. Thank you. To summarize, questions for my talk will be after the next talk.